Hello and welcome to ClearML. In this video, we'll take a look at how pipelines can be used as a way to easily automate and orchestrate multiple tasks. Essentially, pipelines are a way to automate and orchestrate the execution of multiple tasks in a scalable way. Each task in the context of a ClearML pipeline is called a step or component, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an existing ClearML task. It can be any code. A pipeline can be orchestrated by using your own control logic. So you could say run task 2 only if task 1 was successful. But you could also do more complex control logic, like if the accuracy of the final model is not high enough, run the pipeline again, but with different parameters. Pipelines are highly scalable too. Just like any object in the ClearML ecosystem, a pipeline is a task with inputs and outputs that you can clone, just like any other. If you saw our video on HPO, this should ring a bell. It's completely doable to use hyperparameter optimization to optimize a complete pipeline and have all the steps be run distributed on an auto-scaling cluster of agents. How is that not awesome? Okay, but how do we make one? In ClearML, there are two main ways. One is you can easily chain existing tasks together into a single pipeline. This means that each step in the pipeline is a task that you already tracked before using the experiment manager. On the other hand, you could go a little deeper and create pipelines straight from your code base, which is what we'll focus on in this video. But don't worry, the end result is still the same in both cases, a ClearML pipeline. Let's say we have some functions that we already use to run ETL, and another function that trains a model on the preprocessed data. We already have a main function too, that orchestrates when and how these other components should be run. If we want to make this code into a pipeline, the first thing we have to do is to tell ClearML that these functions are supposed to become steps in our pipeline. We can do that by using a Python decorator. For each function we want as a step, we can decorate it with the pipeline decorator component. The component call will fully automatically transform this function into a ClearML task, with all the benefits that come with that, and it will also make it clear that this task will be a part of the larger pipeline. We can specify what values the function will return, and these will become artifacts in the new task. This will allow the following tasks in the pipeline to easily access them. We can also cache the function, which means that if the pipeline is rerun, but this function didn't really change, we will not execute the function again, which is super handy when loading lots of data that takes a very long time, for example. You can go quite far with configuring such a component. One can even specify in which Docker image each particular step should be executed when it's run by the agent. Check our documentation in the link below for a detailed overview of all of the arguments. The next thing we need is our control logic the code that binds all other code together. In ClearML, this is called a controller. We already have our control logic as code in our main function, so we have to add another decorator on here, which is called pipeline. The only arguments you need for the pipeline decorator is a name and a project, just like any other task. Easy as pie. Finally, we can add parameters to the pipeline as a whole. This means that we can easily change these parameters later in the UI and rerun the pipeline with the new parameters fully automatically, just like we did with normal tasks in the previous videos. An important note here is that only if a step uses the output from a previous step, it will wait for that previous step to be completed before starting itself. If not, the two steps will be executed in parallel. At last, we can now run our pipeline. We can choose to run it locally, which means both the controller and all the steps will be run as a subprocess in your local machine. This is great for debugging, but if we want the real scaling powers of our pipeline, we can execute it normally, and the pipeline and tasks will be queued instead, so they can be executed by our remote agents. The pipeline task itself will be enqueued in a special services queue. So when setting up your agents for pipeline execution, take a look at the documentation first. After running the pipeline, you can see both the controller task and the first step popping up in the experiment view. But it's easier to use the dedicated pipeline UI, which you can find on the left here. Here we can find our pipeline project, which automatically keeps track of every run we do. If we click on a pipeline here, we can see a nice visual representation of our pipeline steps. When no step is selected, we can see our global pipeline info on the right. By clicking on the details button, we get the console output of our pipeline controller, which was our main function in the example, so we can see which steps were executed when. 
If we select a step from our pipeline, we can see much of the same details, but this time for that specific step. On the right, we can see any inputs or outputs that our step produced. And below, we can see the step's console output as well as the original code. But now comes the most powerful feature of all. Again, a pipeline controller is a task just like any other. So we can also clone it like any other task. Pressing the new run button will allow us to do that straight from the UI. We can even change our global pipeline parameters here. And just like normal tasks, these will be injected into the original code and override the original parameters. In this way, you can very quickly run many pipelines, each with different parameters. In the next video of this Getting Started series, we'll get a long overdue look at ClearML Data, our data versioning tool, and in the meantime, slap some pipeline decorators on your own functions for free at app.clear.ml. And don't forget to join our Slack channel if you need any help. <laughs> <laughs>